This is Chris from Custom Ride-Ons. I'm going to be going over how to clean and lube a closed end bell electric motor, a brushed motor here. We have an HPI GT550. This is a common motor uh, that people will upgrade to in their um, toy ride-on vehicles. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is take a metal brush like this, just kind of clean off the ends here want to go ahead and lay down some paper towels um, if you're concerned about your work area getting dirty. Just get the majority of the dirt off. Any big pieces. Then you're going to want to remove the pinion uh, because when we submerge it in water it's risk of um, cracking the cup so it's just safer to have the pinion removed while you're submerging it because we are going to run it submerged so just go ahead and loosen up set screw pull it off here set it down Okay, you go ahead and brush this part again, get it good. Right. Now we're going to want to use some distilled water because it has less uh, impurities in it than just plain tap water. Make sure your cup is nice and clean. Go ahead and fill it up enough to completely submerge the electric motor. should be good and you're just going to take a double a battery right here 1.5 volts be fine it doesn't have to run fast we just want it to be able to turn the motor around while it's in here a little bit more water in here Let it run for a little bit. And you'll see that the water will be getting dirty. That's fine. You don't have to run it for a long time. You don't even have to let the battery drain. Just um, run it for about 30 seconds or so and that should be fine. You don't want to hook up a normal battery pack recommend just using something low voltage so that the motor will spin slower than it normally would. How are you doing that? Okay, and you'll notice that the water is um, kind of dark. Okay, now that we've let the motor run in the water, we we'll go ahead and set the cup aside. You want to shake off as much excess as you can and on your paper towel you'll notice that there's you know still going to be some drops um, of water that are appear to be dirty and that's that's completely fine just try and shake it off the best you can doesn't have to be perfect we're about to use some motor cleaner here you get it at an RC shop this cost be under ten dollars I think this can was about six or seven bucks We'll be needing the brush. Set that aside here. Get out of the way. And we'll go ahead and make sure to use the straw on this. It's going to make it much easier um, to get the motor cleaner on the inside of the motor. hardest part of this is uh, getting the straw off of the can. <coughs> All right. That here, and you're just going to go ahead and you can just hold it like this. You can go ahead and stick this down in here and just, just keep spraying. I'll shake it up maybe a little bit. Just go ahead and you're going to notice it's just going to be coming out of the bottom. 
and it's probably not going to be too dirty since we already ran it in the water but uh, this will be much uh, better for it than just having the distilled water in there to help clear all that out and any anything else that may uh, remain in there On every opening, you can just go ahead and spray uh, it in there. Over on this side, spray down in there. You want to do it until everything looks clear, which on this one it already looked clear after we ran it through the water. So this should be good right here. And shake it off, and it's completely fine. Uh, to leave that motor cleaner in there. Um, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, super dry. Just shake it off good now that we've used the motor cleaner. I wouldn't recommend just using the water and then letting it shake it off and let it sit. I'd recommend if you're going to go the water route, also use the motor cleaner here. So yeah, we do have a, a big wet spot here. So, like, you know, if you're doing this on your kitchen table or whatever, definitely put something down so it doesn't create a big mess. If you're, you know, out in your garage, got like a a workbench or whatever and it doesn't matter you know you might not care to lay down uh, any paper towels uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to lube the electric motor we're just only going to lube on right here where the pinion shaft um, meets the can and then here on the other end the closed end right here where you can see the pinion shaft come out we put about one or two drops on each side is going to be more than fine. Um, you don't want to put any of that lubrication oil on the inside. The only thing you're going to want in there really is um, the motor cleaner. So go ahead and you can get this just for a few bucks at like Radio Shack. I'm sure a lot of other places uh, carry it but it's just uh, the product at Radio Shack it's called uh, Needle Tip Pre Precision Lubricator. Just Take it here. You just need about one or two drops. I don't want to put too much because, I mean, you're just going to be wasting the lubricant if you put too much. Do one drop on each side. And that's uh, more than good enough for lubing it up. Make sure you put your cat back on. It doesn't leak. And you can just take it here and you can just twist it. I recommend, you know, putting it upright, twisting it around to get that to kind of spread. And then once again down here. And if you really want to, you can go ahead and hook the battery back up to it. Just let it run just a little bit. Get the lube in there. And that's it. Now the electric motor is nice and clean on the inside. The outside with the wire brush, clean that up. You might still want to take uh, part of your paper towel, kind of wipe off any excess uh, or any remaining dirt that may be there on the outside. And one last thing after you're done um, cleaning it off, you're going to need to reinstall the pinion here onto the pinion shaft. I recommend uh, always using some blue thread locker. Pick it up for cheap at Harbor Freight or I'm um, sure places like uh, Home Depot and Lowe's also carry it. But you're just going to want to put some of that thread locker drop of it on the set screw here. set this down and all you need is a drop this is set screws really small so that's more than enough let's see Just 
slide it onto the pinion shaft. And go ahead and use your little hex wrench. Just tighten it into place. And once that thread locker dries, it will help uh, prevent vibrations from causing it uh, to come loose again. There you go, you should be set.